Sometimes it seems like anything can be turned into a math problem, even a bouncing ball. <laughs> that's a very bouncy ball. I think that's the point of the math problem, right? Yeah, actually, I got it right here. If you release a ball from a height of four feet, determine the maximum height of the ball after each bounce. How many times do you think it'll bounce? I don't know. Judging from what we're seeing here, probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot? Is that a technical term? I'm guessing it'll bounce like 20 times. 20 times? No way. It'll probably bounce like eight times. Well, what about the height of the ball after each bounce? It'll decrease, right? Yeah, but how quickly? Sounds like we gotta collect some data. Mm. Should we do it in here? Um, I think this is an outside activity. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go. Okay. Uh, definitely the first time I ever bounced a ball for a school assignment, yes. No, yeah. yeah. 20 was way off. I was sure it was gonna bounce into Mr. King's office. <laughs> Luckily, Brian grabbed it in time. <laughs> okay, so we've got our data and we've entered it into our graphing calculator. Okay, cool. So by looking at this graph, we can see what the maximum height is after each bounce. Right? So, does that mean we're done? Actually, the question isn't over yet. Looking at the data, choose a way to make sense of what's going on using mathematics. Uh, the ball is bouncing. <laughs> does it count if I can explain it without using mathematics? <laughs> it's bouncing for a little while, and then it stops. And the height of each bounce is decreasing. Yeah, sorry, Connor. I think we're gonna have to use some math to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured it was a long shot. Anyway, I was also wondering about the shape that the bouncing ball data makes on the graph. The shape? Yeah. Oh, uh, what did Miss O'Malley call it? A parabola? Oh, right. The arches. It would definitely be cool if you could model the data using a parabola. Yeah, Connor acted like he wasn't into it, but then out of nowhere, he started talking about parabolas. <laughs> you never know when someone on your team's going to surprise you. But I was still feeling overwhelmed. So we got to find a formula for parabolas? Guys, I don't even know where to begin. Maybe we're making this too complicated. Complicated how? Well, I mean, the question wanted us to focus on the maximum height of each bounce, right? So what if we just ignore the parabolas, for now anyways, and just focus on the maximum heights? Hmm, I like your thinking. What if we just plot the data points? Now we can clearly see that the heights are decreasing over time. Which makes sense, right? Because each bounce was shorter and shorter. Well. That makes me wonder, though. What? Well, remember when we were studying for statistics? Mm -hmm. We'd fit lines to a scatter plot, right? So why don't we just do that? I like it. And I bet since the points are decreasing, we're going to see a negative slope once we fit our line to the data. Yeah, you're right. I mean, look at the data towards the end of the graph. The points seem to be following a linear pattern. Hmm. So should we give it a try? Hold on. Not to shut this down, but I'm not sure that linear is a good choice for the graph. Why not? Well, the definition of linear is equal differences over equal intervals. Here, the difference in heights between the first two data points is much greater than the difference in heights between the second and third points. Justice is right. This can't be a linear relationship. So now what? Sometimes you gotta try a bunch of different approaches before you find the one that clicks. That's just the way it is. So we know the differences in the heights aren't equal, but the ratio of the heights for the points may be. Wait, what do you mean? The ratio of what? The ratio of a bounce's maximum height compared to the one before it. So if we take the maximum height of a bounce from anywhere in the graph and divide it by the maximum height that comes right before it, we'll get 5 eighths. So that means the first bounce is 5 eighths of the original height, and then the next bounce is 5 eighths of that height. Or the original height times 5 eighths times 5 eighths. Yeah, and then after that, it looks like we just keep multiplying by 5 eighths. So this is what we call an exponential function, right? I remember the general form of an exponential function is h of n equals k times b to the n, where in this case, h is the maximum height of the ball, n is the bounce number, k is the initial height, and b is the common ratio. I get it. So in this case, because the maximum height is 5 eighths the height of the previous bounce, we can determine the height of the ball at any bounce by multiplying 5 eighths by itself that many times. But don't forget to multiply by the initial height. So if we want to know the height of the ball at the sixth bounce, we'd raise 5 eighths to the sixth power and multiply that by the initial height. It sounds good. Should we test it out? Um, plug in an easy one for n, like zero. Zero? 
If n is the number of bounces, then zero means the ball hasn't bounced yet. Yeah, so 5 eighths to the power of zero equals one. So if you multiply that by k, in this case four feet, you get four feet, or the height before it bounced. You guys, I think we got it. Should we test a few more numbers just to check our work? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that something as random as a bouncing ball has order and math behind it. Makes me wonder what else mathematics can do.